Hi. How you doing? Good. I'm Me too. Uh, coming to think that I'm the only one that likes to start episodes normal. I s wait. Did I? I start earlier in a recording session. I totally start an episode normal. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Game Devs Play- it was Empire. <laughs> welcome to Game Devs Play Games, where you can watch games and practice game design, and today you can practice Pyre. Is that- does that sound right? Does that not sound right? Tony's here in the hey, background, if you, up, hear, if you hear laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. be the peanut gallery. Eddie's- or Tony's the Eddie Get of the, the episode. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Eddie, I am Eddie the is... Tony of the episode, <laughs> assholes! So, having defeated the withdrawn from a plum, you and the others have some moments to recover from, from, bleh, from the ordeal in the relative safety of the black wagon. Dang, that was... Also, that's a mm, word I've never was, seen before. Yeah, I've never heard of a plum. <laughs> but I, I kind Tony, of really... look at what does a plum mean? Uh, I'm gonna look it up. I'm uh, sure with a plum, is that like? We should just have a Tony Custo here or... all the time, Thank or an Eddie. Yeah, fuck out of here. he's kind of like the the uh, uh, IRL editor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the IRL, get the fuck out of here. So when can we get out of here? What? Green tail. Had enough of Udmil's hospitality for the time. Oh, Jody. Yeah. Thanks, I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way as ever. It's just, so far, we've kept going north. If that's the case again this time... The Sea of Solus spreads north and west from here for untold leagues. I cannot tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. Jizo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, little one? Jizo <laughs> is trying to get you to come look at something outside the wagon. That's nice. <laughs> Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark of the night. Every single time you need to go check the stars, it's always like, everybody will talk and it's always Joe Dario being like, can you just go outside and see what's happening with the stars already? Doesn't matter, like, like somebody else might mention it, but she's the one that's like, do it. She don't fuck around. And by the way, aplomb means self-confidence or assurance. When in a demanding situation. Well, we did destroy that last right. Nice. You're welcome, guys. It's true. You f I, we weren't thanking you. You, <laughs> you find Ray in the Lone Minstrel already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself then, Mr. Minstrel? I fear it is not as simple as a, as matters of canon cannot when it comes to me, Ray. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is their charge. <laughs> they are here, in fact. Thank you for fetching them, Teasel. <laughs> Screw ha! <laughs> He's happy to have obliged the lone minstrel. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please look upon the stars and see where they compel us to go next. You like toward the heavens. Ah! <laughs> <Secret estimate>. uh. <laughs> I guess we'll go here. Oh no! Oh, we're already there. Okay. Let's go, man. You gotta go north. Shut. Yeah, I gotta go north. Did it say Oreos? No, or or Whoa, it did not say was, Oreo. I really hope it said Oreo. It did. Well, you're wrong. It didn't yeah, say Oreo. Yeah, that's good. I really hope that no one can actually hear Tony. Yeah, so he's not <laughs> just, it, it just say Oreos. It fuck I mean, it. he doesn't have a mic, so. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to hear. That's all right. I like it this way. The rights beckon you still further north toward the middle of the Sea of Stol Souls. I should just start making up things. Be like, no, Tony. No, I don't. I don't think you're gay. I'm. No, what? I no. Can we not have this discussion right gay. now? No. <laughs> That's not, that's not good. They're joking, right, chum? Does a reader seem to be the joking type to you, Greentail? Do, are, do we seem like the reader? You have a pretty, like... You have a really good leer. <laughs> so, uh, I would take you seriously. Sweet. <laughs> uh, that's a story. Okay, we do not argue <laughs> with the stars. I, I was, I would receive this compliment recently at work. Somebody looked at me and said, You think that leer is an insulting term? I said, I, I don't... I think that's a insult term at all, but no, I don't find it insulting. It's like you have a good leer. <laughs> I was like, no, that, I take that as a huge compliment. I mean, because I'm a dick, so it, it's oh, pretty good. Sense. You talk like we can just go right out the, into the water. Pardon my interruption, though perhaps we can. Say what? My client Sandalwood. He has a way of anticipating such eventualities. West of here lies a place called Big Bertrudes. The proprietor is an old companion of his. She may be able to assist us with a boat. <laughs> boat. It's a thing. Oh, Surprise. A small bog dweller outpost at the edge of the sea. 
Bog Dweller, for the record. That's who we just faced off against. Edwin's smile returns. It sounds like our best shot right now. Let's pack up and move as soon as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, do we leave our wagon behind, though? I'll be a little sad. He seems to have something on his mind. Greetings, Rita. It is good that you are here, for there is something I wished to tell you privately, now that we are privately together. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long, though I know your time is precious. Privately. <laughs> privately. <laughs> he wishes to tell you something about the rights. Why would I say maybe later? Like, why is this a choice that I'm given? This you is... want me to do you want me to do that. That's what's happening. That's well, actually that's a really good point though. Like should there be a scenario in which it actually is beneficial for you to be like, you know what, you need to fuck off right now? <laughs> That's a weird. I didn't because, really think about that. Why? Because like it's it. If not, there is literally no reason for you to ever say no unless you're just you don't care. Yeah. As a player. Like, and I, I don't think that's really. But a I don't choice. think this is that the game to not care about that. It, it, exactly. It's it's a no choice answer. Like don't have that option because it doesn't matter you're always going to say yes in fact you're more likely to accidentally hit maybe later and get really pissed off about it than to purposely choose that and be happy about it or <sighs> i mean I'm right not, am yeah, i wrong I, like and even i want to i even want to be a dick here and say maybe later but uh, but then we're going to miss out on the information about the rights the only and scenario then you're not going to see what happens here yeah the only scenario in which you may actually want to be like you know what? no is if like maybe he betrays you later, and you have already played through the game and know that. But... Or, or it's like he tells you later at a, like, and it has more meaning later because of it. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. But like, like we would know that. Yeah, it's it's it seems weird. Maybe that's something we'll have to come back to at a certain point. You bid him to continue. Make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time privately. And I should further note matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone, for thus I am obliged. In any case, when you are when you confronted the withdrawn and the witch Udild <laughs> you might recall she tended to invoke a certain name. Yes luck, the Astralborn. I hesitate to say it even now. I think you hesitate for different reasons. Mm, Chris is a bad reader, that's why. <laughs> you would be forgiven if you took the ravings of Udihirme for mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here on the downside, this land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over by the great tit greater titans, not just the great titans. <laughs> <laughs> the one called Yislach was the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. Plus of monsters that once were on the downside. Huh? <laughs> Alright. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Yislach's own hide and ichor to bind the Book of Rites. So, gross. Yeah. It's hide and ichor? That it's a book of skin. That there's a, that there's the necronomicon is strange. Kinda. Icor is a bug thing, and hide is a mammal thing. That is gross. Whatever that thing used to be. <laughs> However, Yeslach did not truly die. By for some accounts, it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now through very, very, though very, very slowly. Its vow to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return in unto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So, in a way, it is in exile, just like you. If ever you should be, should the creature be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus, the ravings of the Udhelrime are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet, the history of Yislach is inexorably linked to the rights. <clears throat> and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all of this is of some reassurance. And now I leave you to your more immediate concerns. I shall go back and check to see how everything is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest of the evening. It's like being like, hey, you know couple generations from now the world's gonna end and cease to exist 
Well, I hope that doesn't bother you. Bye. <laughs> we gotta get some dinner. Hey, Chris, can you also please just narrate all the books ever? No. Please? No. I would pay for it. I mean, if you will pay me, sure. No, I'll pay for one book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. What? Gotta buy lunch somehow. What book? What? I want Chris to do some audio book. <laughs> ah. This place. Let us go see my client's companion as soon as you're ready. Seek Big Bertrude. Big Bertrude is a sickly gathering bog dweller who stays within the shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood sent us. Those words are enough to make the bog dweller snap to attention. <clears throat> they emerge from the mud and dark and begin inspecting your black wagon with their strange tools. One of the bog dwellers oh, oh, slithers ah. force. She is larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the others. Now speak us the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrude. Yeah. Ah, it is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. Nah, he did, did he? Oh. In turn, we know that he thou, uh, who thou must be. Yes, thou speakest the past. Sandalwood, doth he live yet? Speak plain and quickly. To be quite frank with you, madam, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart for from him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand he awaits us somewhere near Wakingwood beyond the water. Nah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> every time she's like, ah. <laughs> uh, Wakingwood is a labyrinthine forest. I wish to seek him there, though as you can see, our wagon is ill-suited for the task. Mm. <laughs> One called Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. <laughs> Indeed. Then leave us. Return at dawn. That is all. <laughs> By your grace, Big Bertrude. Lone <laughs> 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 minstrel runs oh, away. But Edwin, <laughs> but Edwin stops him. Hold on. Are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in their care? <laughs> <laughs> All should be in accordance with my client's plan. You worry too much. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a matter of speaking, he helped me find a sense of purpose I thought I lost. Despite the fact that I was just an immobile <laughs> object in your wagon for a very long time. <laughs> but some of us must all spend time as an inanimate object. <laughs> Edwin nods at this, then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations while the bike dwellers go about their business. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Forge for resources. Ooh. Study it. This is new, isn't it? No, it's it? not. No. It's just we only got to do it once before, I think. Oh. That's why I don't remember it. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't happen too often. But basically what it boils down to is um, get extra experience for a character. Oh. Get, get an item or... Uh, get experience? No, get or a stat a, a buff a stat buff for the next ride, which is yeah. I remember when, and I was like, well, I mean, unless it's like permanent buffs, but I really don't think that's the case. Then I feel like that that would be like a no brainer if that were true. Yeah, right. It'd be like, of but course since I'm it's get not a permanent, permanent it's a no brainer to not pick it because the only reason like you yeah. pick it is if you're I guess bad at the game. Yeah. Really, that's the only thing I think I. Mm. And even, but even like. Say I'm like really bad at this. Say say I was terrible at this game, right? And I like for whatever reason couldn't get past the next obstacle. I would still be like, no, I'm not gonna get the temporary buff because it's bad for the long game. Right. If I can't beat this one, I'm not gonna beat the next one. Yeah, ex exactly. <sighs> Which is not necessarily true. Some are de definitely harder than others. I mean, like it does increase true. in difficulty it's, over time. It's the difficulty but, yeah. curve. It it kind of wiggles and wobbles. But like. <laughs> That, that said, like, I, the experience is pretty cool, and, like, that normally would seem like the answer, but since you have a, a, a finite level that characters can reach, it actually makes the resources one seem just as good, actually, because you only have a finite amount of money that you're ever going to get in the game. So I half agree with you. I think you're right. The only w w only place that I think there still would be room to argue with that is that you get a lot of characters. So you get to a point where you have so many characters that you can't actually hit max level in all of them. 
Oh, it's very possible. I mean, the argument can be said for the items as well. It's to it's, get all of the items. I mean, that's true. It's like Banner Saga, right? You yeah. never level up all your guys all the way, but yeah. you try to max out whoever you can. And I'm wondering if that is going to be the case with this game, if like not everybody's going to hit that top level or not. And that's. I, I, mean, I totally think it's fine. good if that's the case. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so that said, we can. Last time we forged for resources, we we're very happy because we just ended up getting an item that gave us a thousand experience, which is <laughs> yeah, that's what right. you get from mentoring. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so basically more money or, or like getting more experience for a character. Um, I think the item is more interesting. All right. So we can go to the frayed vines. Uh, Falcon Ron would find something valuable there, or we can go to here and you sense, sense a mystical artifact. You know, one thing that I think would really help add a sense of permanence to these choices is if there's a chance that characters can inherit new traits from them. So like, say you go to the acid baths, maybe like, um, uh, our dog friend, I keep forgetting Rookie. his name. Say like Rookie like burns off his mustache and like can't grow it back and he gets sad about it, but like it affects like maybe one stat permanently. Like, I think that would be really interesting in a better way to like give a sense of purpose to these choices. And it yeah, doesn't okay. have to be every time, but if there's always the if chance. there's a possibility of risk there. Yeah. At the start of the right, the adversary's prior automatically suffers minus five damage. Oh, so that's like if it's equipped to a player or one of the characters. You automatically do five. Okay, so, I mean, I definitely didn't get this in my playthrough, so I don't know if I didn't pick the item or if it's hmm. random. It's rank 10, which seems like it would be really powerful. By the way, we didn't check this before, but look at this. Hmm. If you hover over with the Stardust, it will tell you what it will do. Yeah, we, we discovered Did that we? last we? time. I yeah. don't know. Whatever. <laughs> eh, it seems kind of weak sauce, to be it, honest. Yeah. Because there's some things, there's that one artifact that would just straight up give you 30, or uh, whatever a certain amount of health at the beginning of the match. Yeah, five damage is pretty inconsequential. The fact that we can upgrade it would kind of change that, but... At, for it's, and I mean, 10. granted, it's not that it's useless. Like, there have been plenty of times where oh, there's yeah. been five health left. But wouldn't it just be better to have a different item that would more likely allow you to score anyway? Anyway. Yeah, right. I, that's, I that's, that's, that's a That's a balanced question. The one minstrel finds you uh, early the next day. Rita, it is ready. Please, come have a look. The others are already there. I guess I'll step inside. Um, so... Oh, the black wicket appears different than it did before the day before. The hole, the hole is fully sealed and reinforced, and all manner of nautical equipment to door and support side. And there's already fish outside the windows. <laughs> I, wow. You people seeing this? I'm going to have a look around. The wagon should be fit for a sea voyage. Let us depart at your earliest convenience. What about Big Bertrude? <laughs> <laughs> She then appears as if on cue. Tell the sandwood he owes us twice over. If I may, Big Bertrude, could you tell him yourself if you wish to, or you could tell him yourself if you wish to accompany us in our voyage north. Our group would welcome someone of your vast experience. Turn the invitations <laughs> upon us. <laughs> no, I. Enough. But you should see the sandwood. Tell him to come visit again. Now, be gone from here, and tell no one that we pay, we're pay paid in favors. <laughs> she slithers off without another word. Soon, the lone minstrel breaks the silence. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> we are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go. Just as she said, I know the navigational controls and shall explain. This is so exciting. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Scree! Jesus seems to share uh, Ray's enthusiasm for heading out to sea. <laughs> and not knowing how to swim. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel ill already. Yay! We've become seaworthy. Skellywags! We're Worm going golf. to Worm Golf! Worm Golf! Ready? Ready? Uh, whoop! Whoa! Ah, 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 what? Boom. What? You're a boat! Boom! I'm on a boat! <laughs> You're a boat, Harry! This is when the trap. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is when the traveling like actually gets really cool and interesting uh, artistically. You and your companions watch the sea as watch the sea as your wagon rolls over the gentle waves. We have crossed into the worm gulf. I hope that you are acclimating well, because we're about to fight some worms. <laughs> There's no acclimating to these warm infested waters. We risk everything to sell here. As long as we follow the cold current, Big Bertrude indicated we shall be safe. If the next ride is in the middle of the sea, how will our adversaries meet us there? They shall find their way as we find ours. It is part of the scribe's design. <laughs> now, Rita, please confirm the next point of the sea journey. We seek the hunk of oars. Sounds sexy. <laughs> and we're back from Outer Solace. That's all I got. Ready, ready, ready. <laughs> Boing. Boing. What? He, but why did the you, animation why did you is boing? so cartoonish because his, you gotta boing over the, <laughs> the stuff that needs to be boinged over. It is very cartoonish though. It's like, man, I still am in, in that spot of like, I don't know how I feel about any of the art. Right? It, it, it seems maybe contradictory, but at the same time, it works. Yeah, like the. Uh, it's. The wagon continues rolling <laughs> rolling gently over the waves, which seems uh, to you a welcome change of pace after having come from the flagging hands not very long ago. However, Dariel seems more concerned now than before and paces ceaselessly. When she notices Ruki, she stops him for some questioning. Greentail, how is he doing? Ooh, Edwin? Oh, he's pretty much the same. Been all up, been up all night, retching into the waters, if I had to guess. His first time out at sea? His first. She turns to you. Reader, please check on Hedwin when you get the opportunity. We require our support. He requires our support, and uh, we require swift recovery. You wish him a good afternoon as you go check up on the others in the group. Later, you find Hedwin looking out of sorts. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, my friend. It's just the sea hasn't been good for me, I guess. It's funny, all this trouble, just to get back to the Commonwealth of all places. Hey, tell me something. What do you miss most about that place? Ooh. Ah. Oh, Head wants, wants to know what you miss about your past life. I really hope if you say food, he pukes on cue. Like, I will tell you, I said the food and he does not. Oh. I know, that's actually why I picked it. I wanted to see if he'd be like, the food. <laughs> oh, the food. It's a very Nathan way of playing. Yeah. Uh, so because of that, your friends you had or a book collection. See, like, and nothing springs to mind. That's another one where I'm like... You made conscious effort to discard most of your memories of the living in Commonwealth. My fear of picking this is you just gonna be like, yeah, I guess I don't think about it too much either. Yeah, like, what's and there then to be like, gain That's from a great... that? But maybe you'll be like, maybe you'll say nothing comes to mind, and he'll be like, you know, that's interesting, because I've been thinking about it too, and, and ultimately, aren't we all just... Specks of dust in this cosmic. Yeah, I don't know. But like, like I would it. hope that it would be something like that, right? It's like um, games like Mass Effect, right? That always have like the silent option, but the silent option almost never does anything yeah. useful. So I'm like, why have it? Don't have it. Yeah. Make me choose something and, useful. And uh, in uh, the Telltale games, sometimes the silence option was actually a good thing. Like yeah. it was just like a, there's no good choice here, so you pick it, and then it'll be like, I understand why you'd be quiet about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you, you gotta use that shit. So. Nerd. <laughs> also nerd. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna say nothing springs to mind. Let's see what happens. Yeah, all right. Cool. You meant that you missed nothing in particular about the living in the common, which which was, was which was always difficult for a variety of reasons. Although living in exile has not been easy either. I guess we've got a lot in common then, because there isn't much I miss about it either. Called it. Bam. But just the same, I have to find a way back. Anyway, I'll be fine, I think. Thank you for checking up on me. Uh, he sends he wishes to be alone. There's not much to be done for him now. He is too ill to conduct the next ride. May he soon get well. <laughs> I'm hmm. sorry he for was... my interruption, reader. Yeah, you didn't you didn't expedite his healing. Yeah, I'm wondering actually if there is a way to like fix that. Like if one of the other answers would have been like, my friends, and he'd be like, I like friends too. I feel better. I, I don't know. It does seem kind of arbitrary when it comes to see like if it was like put something in your stomach or you're gonna keep puking nonsense right because it's how you help seasickness don't be at see it with the, an empty stomach it's how you puke 
Sort of. Sorry for my interruption, Rita. Please, again confirm the next point in our voyage. Um, well, this is probably a good point to call the episode. That way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's one option. So. Well, there's a... There, the, does anybody else see the words in the sky? No, oh, you can't read, right? I'm the reader. That's, that would explain it. <laughs> like, what if that's what it was? Like, to be a reader is just like, where do we go? Well, there's words over there. No one can see the words floating in the sky. Okay. It'd be it's, pretty legit. Like, it... <laughs> There's literally, it's it's pointing. Mm, all right. <laughs> there's there's even an arrow. It's like look like, look at that. <laughs> if I if I hover my finger over it, it gives me a detailed explanation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question of the day: What are the best ways to utilize the like the neutral, the like empty response? I mean, kind of like what we just saw, um, with being like meh. I got nothing. And he really, he gave me basically the exact answer I thought he was going to, which was, yeah, I don't miss anything either. Eh, whatever. Yeah, and like, I, I think that that still might ex help us explore a little bit of his character. Um, so I don't think that that was necessarily a wrong use of, of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Dialogue. Dialogue in games is hard, but what are the right ways to use utilize the neutral choice? Do, do that, do that thing. Uh... Wait, I forgot. I have something to say here. Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Bye. Bye.